yellow and the orange here are aquaculture, which has made up for the increase in demand. So it looks like production is going up, but actually it's aquaculture which is filling the gap. And here again we show aquaculture is filling, replacing a lot of our wild catch, which would otherwise remain fairly flat. And this graph shows per capita construct consumption from 1950 to 2005 or so. And per capita consumption continues to rise as affluence is, uh, as third world nations become more affluent. So we're seeing more demand for fish and obviously our supply is limited. Uh, here's something I wasn't aware of until recently. There are some side effects of overfishing which are not limited to the oceans. In a lot of third world countries in Africa, the bushmeat uh, trade is impacted by local overfishing. If there isn't enough food available for the people to catch in the ocean, they will turn to land animals, unfortunately. So, we have an overfishing problem. We are subsidizing the catch of fish, and then we are overfishing most of our species that we go after. We have increasing levels of technology where a few boats can go out and catch huge amounts of fish and make millions of dollars in a few days. So it's, a, it's an economic issue. We have habitat juris jurisdiction issues where countries argue about who gets to fish which waters and we have international waters which aren't being regulated at all hardly. And of course we have the overarching issue of supply and demand where we have billions of people looking for fish protein and we need to find them something to eat. So we have a system, this is not, like part of my slideshow has disappeared. Oh man, I can't believe this. Okay, I'm gonna have to wing it. I had some I had some images of larger systems. Do you want to try and it's questions at the end. Like I told you, this is my first time, sorry. Thank you, I appreciate that. It makes me feel a lot better. Um, what I wanted to say at the end here is that this is from a World Watch report where they talk about farming fish for the future. And they say that properly guided the explosive growth in fish farming may in fact be the most hopeful trend in the world food system. I hate to read the slide to you, but it's, it, it is really important to note that what we can feed these fish can be grown on land and we can raise it actually from our garbage supply in a large part. We can raise these, these fish, these tilapia and other species on insects which are raised from our garbage as well as plants which we consider invasive species and weeds and so on. Like duckweed is a very fast growing plant and tilapia I think you know that is a great source of feed. It has high protein and high vegetable matter. It's a really efficient way of growing feed from other waste streams. We can take say for example cow manure you can raise duckweed using cow manure and you can feed those tilapia your duckweed raised from <coughs> basically raised from cow manure. So if we do it right, we have, a, we have the potential to raise enough food to feed everybody without destroying the ocean. Uh, that's, that's my, that's my uh, main focus on my work, is to, is to get this out there and get people started on it to, to where they will understand that we do have the solutions. We, this isn't rocket science. This is something we can all do on a small scale, and this is something we can push for to be done on a larger scale where we can actually reduce pressure on the oceans and systems and problems that we think are just unsolvable, 
nature has provided us the solutions. We don't, we don't have to you know, put a man on the moon to feed everybody. I'm doing classes. Uh, I've, I have a lot of people express interest. There's a sign-up sheet at my booth. I do a two-day class. Sorry to do my pitch here. Oh, I'm in the way. So, okay. Um, the two-day class covers how to build the systems, how to understand the system, how to potentially move on from there to a larger system. And uh, if you stop by the booth, I'll tell you more. You can see my little unit. And we're starting out at a really reasonable rate so that I can get this out there. I really want to try to, you know, save the planet if I can. So, anyway, let's have some questions. Um, I I'll, a, I'll repeat the question. So, if I can take the mic back tomorrow, I'll, I'll just repeat the okay. question. So I, I always like when people that. Um, okay, the gentleman in the back there. You? Yes. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, when you when you harvest the fish, the tilapia, or the shrimp, or whatever, can the waste from the harvesting of it be recycled somehow? Yeah. The question is, can the waste from the fish? be recycled into the system and the answer is absolutely. The soldier flies will consume the uneaten part of the fish. You know, one, two thirds of a fish is unedible. It's bones and it's things that we don't like to eat. So when you, hard, when you fillet a fish you get about a third of it as edible food and two thirds of it is waste. You can feed those to your soldier flies and you can convert it back into feed from there. Okay, go ahead. Um, I, I would guess you're probably familiar with ecogenics and their pond system for growing algae and, and um, uh, uh, tilapia and having them, you know, kind of feed each other. Uh, I'm wondering if a system like that can be integrated with this, so then, you know, as a buy food for the, for the tilapia, so they eat the algae and the, and the algae. And the okay, he's asking if I'm familiar with ecogenics, and I'm not, but uh, I can look it up. <coughs> you can look it up. Um, the idea of creating your own food supply for the tilapia is definitely where I'm at. I want to be able I want people to be able to create their own food supplies for their tilapia. You can buy pelleted feed, which is not a bad way to go, but you can actually grow your own duckweed and other weed species and you can raise these uh, soldier flies to feed your tilapia and you can raise your own feed to feed your fish and ideally that is what we do. Go ahead. Yes. I have two questions. One is, do you have any idea how many people in Central Texas are really aquaponics in their backyard? And my second question is, I, I looked at this stuff on the internet, and I can see people often to see uh, small-scale systems in greenhouses. Well, is that the way you should do it, or should you do it outdoors? Because in the greenhouse, it's going to get too hot in the summer, and then outdoors, you're going to have freezing days. So. Right. Okay, two questions there. How many people in Central Texas are doing aquaponics? And the second question is, do you require, does it require a greenhouse, right? Okay. Uh, there are a lot of people in Texas doing aquaponics on a small scale. I can, I can send you information on that. Uh, just shoot me an email and I'll, let, I'll hook you up or I'll tell you what I know about that. There are, there are mostly just small scale systems. You can run a greenhouse. If you want to run tilapia, you pretty much have to put it in a greenhouse because they require 80 to 85 of water. If you want to run catfish or other cold water species, you can get away without a greenhouse depending on your local weather and how big of a water supply, water system you have. Because if you have several days of cold water or cold temperatures and you have a large water system which is heated properly, you can make it through a cold spell. If you have a very small system, you're going to need you know an auxiliary heating system to actually keep the fish eating. If the fish get cold enough, they will stop eating, and then your plants won't have the nutrients that they require. How cold is that? I'm sorry, what was the question? How cold? You said they stop eating. At what temperature, I guess, are they cold well, tolerant? It, okay, the question is, how? what temperature do the fish require in order to keep eating? And that depends on the species. And that's sort of a long discussion there. Uh, for catfish, I'd say it's somewhere around 50 degrees when they stop eating, so you got to keep it above there. Tilapia. Tilapia, you have to keep them above 70 or they're going to run into health issues. They're, they're a tropical fish which evolved in the Nile Delta and they really prefer 85 